UTIs, PID, all kinds of different conditions. Urinary tract infections are on the rise. Up, 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 up. They're not going down, down, down. UTIs are going up, up, and away. The problem is with UTIs, they're not just going up. They're going chronically crazy where women are suffering incredible suffering. We're talking about devastating suffering because of UTIs. Chronic UTIs that don't want to go anywhere because guess what? The bacteria became super bacteria. It is now a super bug. That's what's happening. So, so many people are dealing with, dealing with chronic UTIs. They can't get past them. They can't move forward. It's just tormenting them and it doesn't go away. Same thing with pelvic inflammatory disease. That too just keeps on tormenting women in such ways that is undescribable because words don't match the suffering they are suffering with. So we're going into that UTI, bladder infections, kidney infections, right? Urinary tract infections, yeast infections, yeast infections. Interesting. Yeast, yeast, yeast. So the funny thing about, well, it's nothing funny about it, but the funny thing about yeast infections is it's not, the yeast is not the real problem. It is bacteria that's underneath it all. The yeast, just the immune system is so challenged in that area that the, the yeast just grows because it's growing because there's so much of an immune suppressive um, situation happening in the bladder area, the vaginal area, all of that, that the yeast just tends to explode, but it's exploding because the bacteria is thriving and taking over. We're talking about strep. We're talking about bacteria. We're talking about superbugs a little bit. We're going into that. We're talking about UTIs. We're going to talk about solutions for UTIs as well. So that's going to be really helpful for a lot of people that are dealing with UTIs. You don't want to miss this episode. This is an important one. I'm even reading a little bit out of Liver Rescue, a little bit out of Cleanse to Heal. Don't miss this. Do you know anybody struggling or suffering with UTIs or have a history of UTIs? And now they have acne. Now they got SIBO. Years later, they get SIBO. Now they get PID. Now they got acne again, then they got an ear infection, then they got a sore throat and a strep throat problem. Mm, yeah, exactly. Strep, 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 strep. Exactly. SIBO. They never talk about what bacteria it is that creates small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, but it's strep. Our good old friend strep. Hey strep, how are you? Fine, doing okay. Living in everybody's lymphatic vessels, living in everybody's pores living in everybody's throats living in everybody's butts yep you got it that's what happens strep is always hanging around people's anuses it's hanging around the rectums all the time that's where strep loves to be it's around everybody's throat it's in their mouth every day people have more than one variety two variety they'll have three variety four variety five variety six variety seven variety they'll have ten varieties of strep some dormant, some low key, some much more serious, creating everything from acne to styes. Yep, styes, thrush, all that thrush on their tongue, just causing problems. So that's the whole thing there. We're going into strep and we're going into UTIs, but let's hit the UTI problem because that is critical because I'm seeing it more and more. Years ago, I didn't see it like it was today. You'd have that antibiotic resistant UTI. You'd have that out there. I saw it out there. Okay. But now it's unlike it's ever been. It's never been to this degree. I called it though, and I saw it. I've written about it, that these bugs would actually take off to such a degree where they'd be antibiotic resistant, but not just MRSA. I'm not talking about MRSA. I'm talking about plain old Jane Strep, not MRSA. This is important to know. This is a really good episode, and we're going to talk about solutions too, which are critical. Um, let's get into it a little bit. The antibiotic dilemma. Do you guys uh, love antibiotics? Antibiotics are the leading treatment for UTIs. Antibiotics are the leading treatments for UTIs. You know what that means? 
That means decade after decade of bugs that are actually becoming immune to the antibiotic. That's how it works. And then that bug spreads to another person. And so that person receives that bug. And then now they have an antibiotic resistant bug. They get sick. And then they go to the doctor. The doctor gives them an antibiotic again. And now their bug is in them that's already antibiotic resistant is now even becoming more antibiotic resistant. And the and then it keeps on going on and on and on and on. So that's what's happening. It's not like the old days. And then the antibiotic kills the weakest bacteria, but the strong survives. So let's do this, okay? I was prepared for this one. Here we go, okay? You got a bacterium right here. You got a bacterium right here. Got a bacterium right here and a bacterium right here. And I'll even put another one right here and one more right here. So these are bacteria, okay? So here we are. Take a look, you guys. These are inside the bladder or the kidney. So let's make a bladder here. Okay, there we are. We got a bladder, right? And in that bladder is a whole bunch of bacteria and strep bacteria is what it is, okay? So antibiotics are used. All of a sudden, boom, we take an antibiotic. The antibiotic is coming through right now. Here it goes. There it is, the antibiotic coming through. There we go. Can't really see this good, but there it is. Boom, the antibiotic came through. Then, now, we get some dead bacteria. This one explodes. Boom, the antibiotic killed it. Boom, another one explodes. Boom, another one explodes. Interesting. This one just gets maimed. That bacterium gets maimed. This one just gets weakened. Am I yelling? <laughs> this one gets weakened. Okay. This one doesn't get harmed at all. All right. We got a weakened bacterium. We got a maimed bacterium damaged, but they survive. They survive and they provide information now against that antibiotic. They hold the key to survival against the antibiotic that was given to them. Think about that right now, right? And then you got one that survived it completely that also holds information, but it's completely unharmed. In fact, it seemed to do good with the antibiotic. That one little bug right there drank those antibiotics, consumed them, it didn't hurt them, and now this one bug right here is getting stronger, nice and strong now. Now it's a nice, strong bacterium. You see this? The maimed ones, not as strong, but they provide information and they stay alive, is what they do. They too survive it, and thereafter they survive it. In the aftermath, they're still hanging around, Okay, and then another one too at the same time still survived it and it's it's there, right? So now you got three bacteriums but three different bacteriums. Same bacteria, but three different experiences, three different strengths, and three different injuries. One not injured, two one maimed, one injured. There's a problem with that though, because then as it's producing more bacteria is being produced, okay, which happens. More and more bacteria is being produced, All right? Here's your bacteria right here. And these bacteria are getting stronger and producing. The weak ones, okay, want to be as strong as the strong one. So the weak ones become even stronger than the original strong one that wasn't even affected by the original back antibiotic, okay? This is important. The weaker ones 
gain strength. The ones that were maimed and injured by the an antibiotic. Keep that in mind. They were maimed and injured and they now, okay, they strengthen, they rise above it, they gather information from their injuries, they learn how to not get injured again by the antibiotic. They become stronger than the one that survived completely without injury at all. And that's a problem all on its own, okay? So now you have very strong bacteria. Here's the thing, they get stronger, they get stronger, and then, all right? And then a new infection occurs. They get stronger, they override, the immune system of the person drops. Exactly. The immune system drops. There's another bladder right there. Okay. So white blood cells, for some reason, aren't as strong in that person. Their own white blood cells aren't doing the jobs they need to do. They get triggered. They get exposures. Something happens there. And then the bacteria rise up and get stronger. And now we have a new infection. They reproduce. I'm going to make a whole bunch of them here. You guys with me? You're following me right now? Okay. And then the new antibiotic comes through. They're sick again. And then a new wave of antibiotic comes through. They're at the doctor's office. They got a new UTI. And then boom, here comes the antibiotic. It's rushing through. Okay. And what happens is all these new bacteria, right? They don't budge. Everybody's happy. They're stronger. They supersede the antibiotic. And then the doctor gets pissed. The patients get the patient gets pissed, stays sick, the doctor's pissed, and then they change up the antibiotic. Get ready for this. The new antibiotic gets then prescribed. So here comes the new antibiotic coming through. And this is what sucks right here. Really sucks. It comes through and then it maims and injures a whole bunch of them. That's right. This one gets maimed. This one gets injured. This one gets maimed. This one gets injured. This one gets almost killed completely. This one just gets slightly injured. This one never gets touched. Okay, that's fine. Here's the problem. Now we got a whole bunch of brand new streps and those brand new bacterium, strep bacteriums have information and survived a new antibiotic. That is not good. They survived a new antibiotic. They're still alive. Now they have information from the original antibiotic, how to survive, survival instincts in the bacteria. And now they got new information from the new antibiotic survival mechanisms kick in in that bacteria. The bacteria does not want to lose, so it's going to now supersede. And then boom, the next phase happens. Okay? You got a patient that's getting a little better again. The patient's getting a little bit better. I really can't stand this whiteboard. <laughs> yep. All right, new bacteria. It's reproducing. There we go. Once again, immune system drops in the patient. The patient was getting better. A month later, two months later, at some point, okay, there's the bladder again. I'm just doing a bladder. You can do kidneys. You can do, you know, urethras, whatever. So, all right. Playing around with markers here. So we got a new bacteria. This bacteria has information from two antibiotics. It has survived two antibiotics. Yes, it has indeed. And it has survived the person's immune system. That's the whole point. It survived their immune system and it survived the antibiotic involved in their immune system. Okay? 
both with the immune system working on that, working with that antibiotic, and both with that antibiotic. Okay, so get ready for this. Person gets sick again. They got another UTI. It's pretty darn serious. They're in pain. They got a fever. They don't know if they got kidney infections, bladder infections. And here we go. There might be some blood in the urine, right? Goes to the doctor. Doctor prescribes an antibiotic, the same one that they used last time. So you fill your prescription, now you're taking it. Antibiotic runs through the body, it's triggering the immune system, immune cells, you're trying to work with it. It's trying to work with everything, it's going through, okay? And this time now with this new antibiotic, it's only killing off this one, only killing off that one, only killing off that one, that one, that one, that one. But this one right here is just injured. That one's injured. That one's injured. That one's injured, injured, maimed. And we got the whole thing over again. All the maimed and injured ones say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to let this antibiotic, this new antibiotic, rule the roost and clean us out. We have to rise above this and we have to get stronger. And then what happens is the new reproduction of that, of that bacterium is even stronger so that the next phase of the antibiotic on the fourth round, which happens all the time, and sometimes it's a sixth round and sometimes it's a seventh, another one's prescribed. Here we go. And now, None of the bacteria are budging at all. Got a fever. There's blood in the urine. The kidneys are inflamed. They have to give steroids out now. So now it's steroids plus the new antibiotics. So here we go. Doctor's got to play the game again. And here it comes. All right. Now it's time to use. Now it's time to use the new antibiotic. All right, so we got this bacteria, that bacteria, that bacteria, that one right there, that one right there. There we go. Here's all the bacteria. Yep. We got another bladder. We'll just do bladder. Here we go. There's the bladder. Now the doctor has to bring in the super antibiotic, one with a lot of side effects, one that causes a lot of problems, one that also says a lot of terrible thing, things on the side effect package, the little rollout. And here we go. Here it comes. Boom, 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 boom. I'm taking my antibiotic. Right? The super antibiotic. The super one. A change up. Okay? Injures this guy. Kills off this guy, maims this guy, injures this guy, kills off this guy, doesn't even touch that guy, that guy, and that guy. Now you got three guys here not even being touched by the super antibiotic, but you still got injured but not dead bacteria. Injured but not dead bacteria. You got some dead bacteria, but too many injured too many injured and too many maimed, but still survived. And others that didn't even get affected. And then we got a big problem. So now they reproduce again. After the super antibiotic went through, they reproduce. This time, we're in trouble now. Big trouble. Here we are. Because they used the super antibiotic again. And then they have that running through. And now, these bacteria, they have messaging, they code it, they have information. They're super powered. They do not, not give up at this point. They have information of four to five different antibiotics. And they don't want to budge anymore. They put their foot down, they're done. That means they don't budge. So then the doctor has to run another antibiotic, brings that one through, and now the patient is just chronically sick, chronically suffering and chronically sick. 
A superbug has been born. The patient has the superbug, whether it's a male, female, the patient has a superbug, and then the patient has a relationship, or the patient is a chef working in a restaurant who cuts their finger and then bleeds on three different meals that you can't really tell because a lot of the chefs, they wear the black gloves. They put the black gloves on. They throw a bandage on, put a black glove on. There's still blood everywhere, and they get working really quick. They wipe their hands. and Or it's a relationship, sexual interactions of some kind, and then that super bug now gets transferred onto someone else with all this information and all this messaging and that information or the shopping cart Shopping cart's a big one. I've been saying this for decades. You guys heard me say it years ago before C came around. The shopping cart is a big one, okay? Lots of different bacteria on there, lots of strep, lots of staph, lots of C. diff, lots of MRSA, lots of other stuff too. But the strep is just crazy on the shopping cart handles. Crazy. That's how much is on there, okay? So with that, if they swabbed, if they did a swab in a Petri dish, if they did that, like off the shopping cart handles, you wouldn't believe what would grow. You wouldn't believe it. So you're sitting there with a shopping cart handle. You're not using handy wipes. You're not doing an alcohol handy wipe across the handle. You're, you don't, you're, you're not thinking about anything. You don't care about anything. Maybe you're just somebody that thinks that your immune system will get stronger because of it and you won't have to worry because, hey, who cares? I can just eat bugs and have bugs all over my skin. It's just all that whole thing, that philosophy, that philosophy, right? It makes you stronger. You become immune to it or something like that. That's not true. That's not how it works. You, the more exposure you get to these bugs, the more exposure you get, the more bugs you get, the more problems you have. And then that, it doesn't work that way where we're just all of a sudden, hey, I'm immune to everything and that's what I want, all these bugs. No, it does not work like that. Tell that to someone who got, you know, herpes simplex too. Tell that to someone who's got something else that they caught from somebody. It doesn't make you stronger. It's not how it works. It's a hassle. It's all a hassle. So then that strep, then that super bug gets into somebody else through a shopping cart ha handle, through a public bathroom, off the toilet seat, off the dispenser, whatever it is, and they get it. And they get the bug that's super powered. It is a super version of itself. It already knows all the antibiotics. It already knows about them all. That means when you come down with something or you get sick or something happens and now you got a UTI, whatever it may be, you go to the doctor and the process starts all over again, but the doctor starts giving that first round of antibiotics and it won't budge so easy. Especially if you have a compromised immune system and you're already struggling with something. It won't budge. And they're just like, why do you have these UTIs all of a sudden? Or say, you know, someone has someone has sex with somebody else and you know it's unprotected. Even if it's even if it's protected sex. It's still easy to transfer these, like these, um, these streps and this bacteria, and all of a sudden now there's a new UTI somebody has that never had before, and now but it's an anti-resistant, it's a what is it, antibiotic resistant is what I mean, version of itself that has all this information that's coded, that's got all this intel, that survived all these antibiotics, that knows them well. So now we have another person with a super bug and just as grim as this sounds, it's not grim when you know how to heal and use tools. And that's the thing about medical medium information. It's the one place where people that are the sickest come to find the answers and it's not all that biohack bullshit out there that's going on. It's real. It's the real deal. It's real answers, real information on how to heal, what to do, and that's medical medium information, and that's how it's always been. People can be jealous out there, and they can rip it apart or say what they want about it. It sells the most people healed in the world, the most chronic conditions, and this is why. Knowing about this information, not just biohacking crap on social and just this, 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 and try this. It's for people who have been there and done that. They're seasoned and they know. So what happens is there is hope. So when these super bugs, the super strep, gets to somebody else and they're fighting these, these battling these UTIs, and it seems hopeless, there are women out there with chronic UTIs every day of their lives going into overactive bladder, 
going into chronic UTIs, overactive bladder, pain in their kidneys, pain in their back, PID, and then attack on acne and sore throats and SIBO because they all get a SIBO diagnosis eventually. Tack on to all, all those in there and they're living with these super bug streps. It's happening more and more out there and there are more people living with this than ever before. Now there is an upsurge that's getting out of control, a serious upsurge. And that upsurge is not gonna stop. It's gonna keep on going unless people know how to arm themselves and take care of themselves and know how to fight. Feed their bodies what they need, do the right things, giving their bodies what they need so they can they can beat this super bug stuff down because it's no joke right now because people are passing these along and it's out of control. People need the right information. There's Cleanse the Heal right here in front of me. And in Cleanse the Heal, it got pelvic inflammatory disease, right? And even, you know, PID, right? And even prostatitis, got that there too. And I'm talking about bladder infections, UTIs, all of that in here. So it's Cleanse to Heal. People need this book. They need the information. I have Liver Rescue in front of me right here. I want to read a little bit about this for a couple of minutes, if you guys don't mind. The story of strep is what I was just telling you guys. That's the story of strep right now in this modern day, what people are dealing with and how bad it is. Okay, most people strep starts in childhood. They get the ear infections, they get the strep throat, the sore throats. It starts earlier on. It's strep passed down from the parents a lot of times, and it's strep that's passed down to the parents, and then the children, the the children have it, and the children pass it to each other in school. And so it's it's strep being passed around everywhere. That's what it is. But that could be fine in some ways, but in others, it's antibiotic resistant strep that's being passed around going to each person. And that takes us to the next level of understanding, which I want to go to now, which is the immune system. Okay. That's the next thing. Every time strep enters into somebody and battles our immune cells and it survives, so anytime strep enters into each person and it goes into war with our immune cells right here, it goes into war. Every time that happens and there's a battle and the strep survives, it has information. So when that strep is passed on to another person, it's not just antibiotics. It's also relationships with the immune system of the person it was in this whole time. So then when that strep gets passed on to somebody else, it's getting passed on to somebody else with information on that person's immune system. Information of how it survived the battle with that person's white count. And so when that strep is in the new person, the strep now has a way to beat immune systems. It goes into another person, another person's immune system goes up against it. There it goes, it's in battle, the, the bacteria survives. Why do you think people keep on getting acne all over again? They still have some strep surviving. Why do you think they keep on getting the UTIs over again? The bladder infections, the overactive bladder, right? That one too, OAB, they keep on getting these things. And then the styes, and then the sore throats, and then the strep throat periodically, and then the earaches and ear infections, or they get exposed to new strains, and that's another story, we'll go into that too. The strep has information of the person's immune system, information of the antibiotics the other person took. They take it to the next person, the next person's immune cells go against it, they go into battle, what survives, is boom, the bacteria again, some of it survives, it gets passed on to a new person with now immune system information from two others. Now here's where it gets really intense. That bacteria can go through a hundred people and gather information from their immune systems of that hundred people. That's how superbugs are made. It's not just the antibiotic overusage and then the un and then not being taught how to heal and get rid of the bacteria naturally. It's also information from each person's immune cells to each person. 
and that bug becomes one unstoppable, brutal bug. And that's why there are women out there, young women in their 20s and in their early 30s that are in tears on a daily basis and they are so sick and they have so much UTI, chronic UTIs going on. They have so much overactive bladder, UTI, kidney infections, sore throats, malaise, tired fatigue, everything else under the sun with it. And they're suffering and they're bleeding. They're on antibiotics again. Their stomach's being ripped to shreds from the antibiotics. Then they get their SIBO diagnoses and it's all around the same old thing, more antibiotics for that. And they're suffering. And then because they got a strep inside of them that could have been through a hundred people that was passed on to them one way or another. And that strep is smart. It's smart. It knows the immune cell information from dozens of people. It knows the antibiotic information from dozens of people and it carries it with it. And we have to know how to destroy that bacteria and how to kill it and what to use that it is not immune to. Because that's the key, right? Medical medium information is always about the cause. Because guess what? They didn't know strep was a UTI problem. They didn't know strep was other problems. They knew about strep throat, but they didn't know strep created acne. They didn't know it created styes. They didn't know it created UTIs, by the way. That's medical medium information. But it does. And it's just coming out. People are poaching it and it's going out there and it's just getting out there every day. Just like you guys are probably seeing because I know you guys are telling me you see it every day. We see it every day. But the point is, is that bacteria, we have to learn how to kill it. You have to identify it and know there's a cause behind your PID. There's a cause behind your UTIs. There's a cause behind these things. And there's a way to kill and destroy kill and destroy the bacterium. Even bacterium that is antibiotic resistant and knows a crap ton of people's immune systems, that understands all these people's immune systems that that bacteria was in all this time, understands it is an expert at immune systems because that's what the bacteria becomes. It becomes an expert at everybody's white count, immune cells, all of it. It knows it all. It's been in too many people, it hasn't been destroyed, and it's gotten stronger and stronger, and now it's a superbug, and that's where it's at. And that's happening now every day. And we think these superbugs are bad now. Wait till the next round of UTIs 10 years from now, and all the young men and women, it's gonna be like nobody's ever seen, ever seen. It's gonna be that bad. It's gonna be bleeding as normal, constantly bleeding, catheters, constantly on catheters. That's another thing too. So the UTIs are getting to a point where all these young women are, are literally living with catheters. That's how bad it is. And so we have to be mindful and understand that there is a way to beat it and there is a way to do it. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but I want to read a little if I can. Okay. Maybe most people's strep starts in childhood, maybe even passed down from a parent at conception. Yes, a newborn can enter the world with strep already in her or his system. A child can also get strep from daycare or school, and it's easily passed from child to child. It really is, as well as adult to adult, because strep is a type of bacterium Antibiotics do seem like the obvious choice to treat it, but here's the crucial point that I talked about to know about strep long ago before antibiotic revolution, before antibiotics, long ago, you guys, this is really interesting right here, before the antibiotic was born long ago, strep used to be one strain of bacterium. Strep was one strain of bacterium which takes us to this next part right here. Now, this is really important, okay? This is important, very important. I'm gonna bring this around for a second, okay? All right, so five antibiotics ago, 10 antibiotics ago, 10 different people ago, the bacteria look like this, right? But then it changes. A new strain is, is 
is created along with the superbug power. It alters and turns into a different bug. Now we have the old strain. That's way in the past and it's in other people. We got the new strain and there it is. Right there. That new strain becomes another new strain eventually, another new strain, another new strain. But here's the thing. If you pass on this strain that it became to another person through sex or through drinking from somebody's glass or from being in a bar and eating something or whatever you're doing in a restaurant or on a shopping cart, in a shopping cart or in a public bathroom or so many other ways you can do this. If you pass on that strep bacteria to somebody in that, in that strain to them, they'll have that strain. And they may keep that strain, but it'll be that strain, okay? These in this person can still alter and become a new strain in a few years. That new strain can be passed on to another person and then they'll have that strain, see? That's how it works. Men can get UTIs too, and they do, but they don't have a cycle. Men do not have menstruation. They do not have a cycle, so they don't have the immune system lowering thing that happens. So what happens is when a woman goes through menstruation and she has her cycle, her monthly cycle, her immune system drops, and 80% of her immune system goes to the reproductive system. That's medical medium information. 20% stays around the body for the rest of the body. The reproductive system is the number one focus that time of month where it's the number one focus for the immune system. Think about that, right? So because of that, the immune system is so focused around the reproductive system, okay, that it's easy to catch strep orally, very easy to catch it orally or in the eyes where the immune system isn't there to destroy it right off the running. So if there's some kind of relationship or a shopping cart, like I said, or a public bathroom and something goes in the eye or something gets in the mouth, whatever it is, during the cycle, 80% of the immune system isn't around the mouth. It's not there. So for a woman, it's not here. It's down here. So the strep can easily start its, its beginning in the mouth, in the throat, and the so forth, so forth in that area. So that happens too. <clears throat> All right, let's go into this a little bit. All right, here's the crucial point to know about strep. Long ago, before the antibiotic revolution, I'm reading out of Liver Rescue. If you guys never seen these books, you don't know about these books, you should get both of them. Go to Amazon, get both. Be the best thing you ever did. Become an expert about your own health. Learn how to heal. Become a true expert. A true expert, not a biohacker. <clears throat> Strep is not and never was a superbug in the past. So strep was never a superbug. It's not designed to be a superbug originally. It was never meant to be one. We are forcing it to become a superbug. Okay? It's much more forgiving strep than ever than anything else was. Okay, in its original state, going back many years ago, it was much more forgiving. It's a forgiving bacterium. It's not as unforgiving as MRSA. It's not as unforgiving as MRSA. So that is something to understand. C. diff and MRSA can be even much more brutal, much more brutal of a superbug. Strep still, even with its worst superbug mentality, whatever, it's more superbug creation. It doesn't hold the power as like MRSA and what MRSA can turn into. Some kind of flesh eating bacterium that just becomes a super, super bug. So I want that clear so people know. So if they got strep and they're living with strep, they're living with all these symptoms, you can turn it in. It can turn naturally into a super bug over time because it's force fed the antibiotics. It's force fed in the way I was saying all those things, but it won't get to like a MRSA level at MRSA's worst. So the different varieties of MRSA, there's all these different varieties of MRSA. Did you know there's thousands of varieties of MRSA? 
and some of the top tier varieties of MRSA that are just like god awful and they kill people is what they do and they give them sepsis and then they die They're like the top tier of the worst strep's not there so i wanted that to be clear but strep is no longer one strain i want to go back to that a little bit it's no longer one strain there are so many varieties of strep at this point over the decades Strep being a victim of antibiotics, it found a way to survive, to adapt. Adaptation didn't just mean getting stronger. It meant mutating and spawning different strains and varieties. And that's what strep does. It's the ultimate like spawner of new varieties of bacteria. All strep, all the same family, but it's the ultimate. See, Heal with Mariana says over there on IG, I healed my UTI back in 2002 with the herbs and supplements you recommend in Cleanse the Heal book. Amazing. Is it 2020? That's what it is. Um, healing with Victoria. I used to be on an antibiotic once a month for UTIs. I haven't needed them in four years thanks to your protocols, thanks to you and SOC. Because medical meme information destroys UTIs. Just destroys them. So one thing about MM Info, if you know how to use it and you use it right, you can annihilate so many different strep conditions. Shamrock over there in IG, this was me with IC. Whoa, IC. For 20 years of extreme bladder pain until I found medical medium information. Thank you, AW. Incredible. Incredible. Over here, Heidi on IG. Before medical medium, I had chronic strep throat, UTIs, and kidney infections. I now have no pain and haven't had to run to the doctor in many years. This info works. Quote from you. Amazing. And I will add to that quote from you. It does work. It does work. It does. It has a track record of working. That's the power of it. And no biohackers and informationalists messing around all these different things out there on social can do that for people. This information does, and that's why I'm a messenger of SOC's information because it saves lives. Maria over there on YouTube, great topic. I used to get UTIs all the time, and they are so painful. It's much better thanks to AW and SOC. Incredible. Let's go into a little bit of protocol talk a little bit too. And let's just double check. We covered some stuff right here. Let's talk about like the different strains a little bit longer, the spawning, the different strains. I want to go into that. Over there on YouTube, Wondering Wishing. Good to see you. Antibiotics used to be the go-to for our family. After medical meeting protocols, Vimergy, Zinc, Micro C, Ginger, Turmeric Shots, Cat's Claw. Oh, I love that Cat's Claw. I love that Cat's Claw. And Celery Juice. No more. We are free from the constant doctor appointments. Thanks, SOC and Medical Medium. It's going to get me emotional <laughs> because, you know, when you heal, it is everything. Maria over there on YouTube. Great topic. I used to get UTIs. Oh, I saw that one already. Great. Chrissy over there. And I think um, Twitch, Stitch. Chrissy, I was in tears every time I had a UTI. I can't imagine the amount of people that are going through it. And they go through it on levels that are just devastating it's become like the super bug now level and it's brutal and so many people suffer from it their guts get ripped to shreds from all the antibiotics they have to take they're on steroids almost all the time and it's brutal along the way strep got classified as having a group a and a group b yeah the medical world now identifies strep all the way through group h Group H, though, as you read about in the acne chapter, because acne is strep caused, by the way, you guys, it is, it's medical medium info, but it's strep caused, that the population carries. There are also strains within the known groups that are yet, un, that are yet unidentified and undocumented. So here's how medicine works. <clears throat> medical research in science works like this. They've classified some of the bacteriums the strains, but they haven't classified all of them, haven't even scratched the surface. So there's bacteria out there that they haven't even documented, classified, got their hands on or anything like that. And that's the scary thing. It's even scarier. Yep. 
even a gifted and talented lab technician discovered that even if a gifted and talented lab technician discovered that there were more strains and groups of strep that weren't currently known, the breakthrough would go unrecognized. The scientists would not be able to find funding for this area of critical medical importance because right now funding is too tied up in misled areas like how genes relate to disease. So yeah, you guys, let's go into this a little bit now. Some protocol stuff. I'm in time to heal. If you don't have the book, I feel bad for you. Get the book, get the book, get the book. I mean, you don't have to spend a $5,000 program on how to walk barefoot on your, on your lawn. You can do that, but it won't make your UTI go away. Keep that in mind. You can do earthing and you can do like you can not wear shoes and you can watch the sunrise in the morning and you can angle your bed a certain way in your room the way the sun rises and sun, sun sets. But none of that's going to get rid of somebody's debilitating acne, styes, UTIs, bladder infections, kidney infections, PID. It's just not going to happen. Hardcore stuff that has to work. Then you can do all that stuff for fun. The other stuff I was mentioning. Okay. Desan144 on IG. I was in so much pain for nine months with interstitial cystitis. Celery juice saved my life. Yeah. And that's why when someone says celery juice sucks or celery juice isn't what it is or something out there, that's it's actually such a disservice to the chronically ill. It's so sad when celery juice literally has turned lives around, saved lives. Yeah. I know. All right, let's go into it. Pelvic inflammatory disease, PID, right here. Talks about UTIs. It's in here, right here. Cleanse the heel. All right. The true cause, bacterial infection of one or more strains from over 50 groups of strep. There are different levels of PID. It's like different levels of UTIs. Different levels to all the different things. Different levels to SIBO. Incredible. Okay, so let's go into the protocol, right? Starts out, interesting. Fresh celery juice. I still have some left right here. If you guys want any, I still got some right here. We're, we're in uh, AW's kitchen, so. Fresh celery juice, it says work up to 32 ounces daily and cleanse the heel. Work up to 32 ounces daily. I did my celery juice and it didn't work. I did my celery juice and it didn't work. I was doing four ounces. It says work up to 32 ounces. What page? And Maria says, what page? 537 and cleanse the heel. So page 537. Get your book out. Okay. Second thing in here, aloe vera. Aloe vera for UTIs. For PID, for overactive bladder too, aloe vera, two or more inches of fresh gel, skin removed, two or more inches of fresh gel, skin removed. All right. What's the next thing on the list? Barley grass juice powder. Another thing on the list, cat's claw. Very interesting. Cat's claw. Critical for UTIs, critical for PID, critical for men that are having prostatitis. Right there, cat's claw. It's a big one. You'll hear more about cat's claw every day out there and more about cat's claw every day. It's the medical medium information that got that out there. Cat's claw was around. It's been around, obviously, but using it for the things that it's being used for, for protocols, is medical medium information originally for cat's claw. Curcumin, and there you go. That's another one. D-mannose, yeah. D-mannose is great, but you need more than D-mannose. If someone's dealing with UTIs and PID and some of the things I'm talking about here, you need more than D-mannose. D-mannose is in here. It's part of the protocol. And sometimes you'll hear out there like a practitioner or somebody will say, D-mannose, use that for your UTI. It's like, okay, but what about the golden seal? What about the cat's claw? Where's that? What about the celery juice? Demanos, Demanos. 
Drink cranberry juice. Drink cranberry juice. That's great and all. That's great. But guess what? It's not enough for the kind of UTIs that are happening out there every day right now. No way. It's not enough. But it is when it's compiled with other things that helps, right? Right. And the books have the amounts to cut, but you customize. I talk about the amounts in here, but you customize. <clears throat> Over there, NG. Elena, I had several severe PID, which went to left kidney too. Ooh. I was told I need hysterectomy and will be disabled. Healed that with MM. Now all I need is to heal G, uh, ALS. <clears throat> or it says GBS, ALS. All right. Eyebright. It's another one right there. Golden Seal. Golden Seal. UTI. Golden Seal. UTI. Golden Seal. Why do I do that? People just, they get lost. They don't hear something. They don't know. They get a UTI next month. Don't even remember. So I'm hoping if you're one of those people, you'll be able to save yourself. UTI. Golden Seal. So I talk about here, dosage is everything. Okay. Remember the quality of supplements matter. So check out medical meme information, but the quality of the supplements matter. Critical. I talk about that in the supplements chapter in Cleanse the Heal. Make sure you look at that. Really important. Another one. Strep, UTIs, PID, overactive bladder, all these. Lemon balm. UTIs, lemon balm. Okay, ready? UTIs, licorice root. <laughs> Licorice root, <clears throat> UTI, nettle leaf. Incredible. And there's more in here too that you can play with, customize yourself. It's here, the information that SOC brought to us to save people's lives. I get it. It's fun, you know, surfing the net, surfing social. Whoa, let me cold plunge. You know, whoa, let me walk barefoot. It's all great. Whatever. Cold plunging is not good. <laughs> not good for people chronically sick. All that stuff. But either way, I'm talking about fixing problems. And that's the key. And that's what the medical medium information does. Fixes problems. Keep that in mind. Amy over there on IG. Friend with MS. Was on Walker. Only 30 years old. Drank fresh celery juice daily. And could walk again after about four weeks. I love you guys. Incredible. Oh, got to tell you one thing though. Medical Meme Podcast at Apple Podcast. Mercury in fish and fish oil. Don't miss it. Mercury in fish and fish oil. Where does the mercury go? Where does the mercury go? Do not miss the Medical Meme Podcast at Apple Podcast, you guys. If you subscribe to it on Apple and you're not getting the you know notifications, check anyway. Check the podcast so you can see the new episodes. You may not be getting notified. I see that's happening to a whole bunch of people. So check out the Medical Meme Podcast at Apple Podcast. Mercury and fish and fish oil, where does the mercury go? Get on the medical medium newsletter too so you can learn about what's happening because I am going to be somewhere in person. I'm going to be somewhere in person earlier this year. I'm letting you know this year. So I'm going to be like a little later this year. I'm going to be in person. I'm going to sign some books. If you got a, if you got an old medical medium book, bring it up to me. Bring it up to me. I'll sign it. I'm letting you know. Okay? Definitely. I'm really excited about that. I'm just trying to figure out the logistics to, to really know exactly where I'm going to be, but it's going to be LA. And then the location, I'm working out the logistics on the location. I'm hoping I see you guys there. If not, maybe another time in the world. I don't know. I never did a book signing. It's the first official book signing ever in the history of all the medical medium books. And um, so, I mean, you might want to be there and bring your book so I can sign it. Join the Medical Medium Telegram as well. 
I might leave a message tonight, and I, in fact, I think I will leave a message tonight on Telegram, okay? And join the Instagram broadcast channel. I'm going to leave something there, too. Have you actually joined the, the broadcast channel? Okay? It's called the MM Inside Scoop. MM Inside Scoop, the medical medium broadcasting channel. I'm going to leave a little message on there, and I'm going to leave a Telegram, God willing, God willing. I will leave a telegram. You guys, I love you much. And thanks for being here today. I can't wait to see you next time.